I don't know about you, but I hated sauerkraut when I was a kid. The stuff that come off the grocery store shelf, it smelled funny, was mushy, and it tasted weird. I was even one of them kids that liked weird tasting things, but I just didn't like sauerkraut. Turns out sauerkraut is one of the original ferments of its time. Traditionally made from cabbage and saltwater brine, it is fermented for several weeks or even months before it's eaten. Lactid, lactic acid bacteria, which is present naturally on all plants, does all the work for you and turns the cabbage into something awesome to put on your sandwich or hot dog. Homemade sauerkraut is amazing and does not resemble store-bought at all. Plus, it's super easy and cheap to make. It is so good for your gut. So I hope you make you some homemade sauerkraut. It's really good for you. Okay, we are fixing to make some sauerkraut. Now, I've been waiting for this for a while to get some good fresh cabbage out of my garden. Now, this year, as hard as, as I have tried the bugs, I just, I'm tired of fighting them, <laughs> i tell you the truth. And, um, some of my videos, uh, y'all that have been with me for a while, y'all know that I use a, a tool fabric and I cover my heads of cabbage up with it to keep the moths and, and everything, the different bugs out of there that keep wanting to eat my cabbage up. And uh, it just didn't work, work this year. It's been really tough. The bugs have been really bad this year. Um, I've been fighting squash bugs and you name it. Now, the one good thing I can say is we've had, we found a lot of the little bitty um, ladybugs. And we've had, I have seen a lot of good bugs that you don't want to kill because they're the ones that get rid of the bad bugs. But this has been one year for my cabbage, even though I do have some beautiful cabbage here. This was four small heads and I uh, weighed it. And I weighed it after I shredded it. And after shredding it and uh, weighing it, it was just a little over four pounds, but not much. So that's what I got was about a pound of shredded cabbage out of each little head. And I've got some more cabbage to I need to harvest before. And today it's over 90 degrees and everything out in the garden is just like, pfft. I mean, it's suffering today really, but uh, that's just part of living here in Arkansas. One day it's beautiful weather and next next minute it's it is so hot and the gardens are really you know struggling but we do have a long gardening season and my favorite time to garden is during the fall i absolutely love a fall garden but let's get busy making our sauerkraut this is going to probably be a little bit different than what some of y'all make uh, there's all kinds of different sauerkraut recipes out there um, I'm going to be using a little bit of coriander seed. I'm going to crush it up a little bit. I'm going to be putting some apples in my sauerkraut. You can generally, the recipe I call for Granny Smith, but I just use whatever kind of apples I've got on hand. I've got a large onion that I shredded up pretty fine. And of course, this is how I shredded my cabbage up. I've got a mandolin that was given to me by a dear friend several years ago. She said, Lori, I just don't ever use this thing. I'm going to send it to you. So I really use that thing on a lot of stuff, but shredding the cabbage up does a really good job. So four pounds of cabbage for this recipe. Uh, usually I do double this, but today I'm just going to do just a regular smaller recipe of it. One large onion. I've got two apples that I sliced up really thin, as thin as I could get it and then my coriander seed and then my cannon salt. And you can add um, some turmeric to this if you want to. Any kind of seasoning that you really like in your sauerkraut, just feel free to add to it. I am going to switch this uh, cabbage over to just a little bit of a bigger bowl. Now what I've done is um, for four pounds of cabbage you're going to want to use about two tablespoons of salt and I'm using cannon salt um, if you had five pounds a good five pounds of shredded cabbage here uh, three tablespoons of salt will be good 
because you can undersalt your kraut and you can oversalt it. So you got to get that happy medium in there somehow. So I'm going to transfer this cabbage over here. I've been getting uh, a lot of cucumbers and I've got a video making uh, refrigerator pickles and I'll put all that down in my just the link to all them canning recipes down in my description box below my videos and um, a lot of squash here lately zucchini and I'm going to be showing y'all how I put my squash and zucchini up too now a lot of y'all uh, probably remember the uh, Charles from Old Alabama Gardener and he was one of my favorite gardening shows if ever I needed to know something, I always went to Charles, and we all really miss him a lot. But uh, he's the one that taught me how to put canned squash to fry, and uh, I haven't done a video on that. I just stuck his video in my canning playlist, and I would rather y'all watch him do it since he's the one that taught me to do it, and I can tell you it works. And if y'all want me to, I'll op I think I've already done this. I'm not sure. I I'll open up a jar of that canned squash and I'll fry it up for you so you can see that it really does work. So I've got my four pounds of shredded cabbage. I've got a whole onion here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mix all this together before I put my salt in. Ooh, that was kind of a stout onion too. It's supposed to be a sweet onion but sometimes you just never know. And I've got two apples here. I think these were the honey crisp that I've been trying. I had a big old uh, bag of them that me and Mr. Brown have been trying to eat. I've been using them for everything. And I'm just going to mix this up a little bit. Now the apples will ferment. The onions will ferment right along with your cabbage. You talk about uh, gut healthy, this right here is. Now I've had a lot of comments on several older videos that I've done. Uh, fermenting cabbage. One of them was the way my grandmother used to do it. Uh, she would just can her, her cabbage and she would leave it in the pantry till about midwinter and then we'd open it up. Now it wasn't a very sour sauerkraut but it was just enough because it would ferment inside that jar now she had to leave her rings on uh, so that it wouldn't the ring the lids wouldn't pop off but that's just the way they done it back then because it wasn't that they were uh, they weren't even thinking about the probiotics in it to tell you the truth they were just putting food up to put in their bellies and uh, so canning cabbage was just one of the things they done now, I also have a video after fermenting my cabbage, canning it for long-term storage. Well, you do kill off a lot of the probiotics doing that. But like I said, it's not always about that. It's about feeding your family. But, for everybody's curiosity, I always have fermented sauerkraut in my refrigerator and we eat it that way too because we love it for one thing we love sauerkraut and because it's good for our gut so not only do I have it canned I've also always have some in a jar or in a crock fermenting and after it's fermented after about six weeks I'll put it in a uh, a couple of gallon jugs or whatever it takes and I'll keep it in the refrigerator so it stays good and crisp and uh, we just get some when we want it and it lasts forever in that refrigerator like that okay so I got that mixed up good and my hands are good and clean I've got my little pestle here and I'm going to grind me up let's see I'm going to do maybe a couple of 
Oops. Just a couple teaspoons, maybe. And I'm not really wanting to grind them up. I just want to kind of break them up. Just kind of break those coriander seeds up a little bit. I got this little bitty pestle and, um, oh, I don't even remember where I got it now. I think I got it when we went to the, last year to the lake. We went somewhere and I seen it and got it. So I broke that up, those up really good. And I'm just going to put those in there. It's probably a little over a teaspoon. Put as much as you want in there. Now I'm going to put two tablespoons of my cannon salt. Now remember, this is just a little over four pounds of cabbage. I'm going to mix that up first real good. And I'm going to put something on top of this and just let it sit for just a little bit after I work all my salt in here. Just kind of massage it. Just kind of massage your, your cabbage. Y'all, i got to tell y'all a story that happened to me this past week. And why y'all didn't get a video Friday. <laughs> oh, I'm kind of embarrassed to even tell it. But a lot of y'all know that when I do my videos, the only piece of equipment that I use is my phone. I film and edit everything on my phone. I don't have a bunch of fancy cameras or any equipment. For one thing, I'm too frugal. And another thing, I probably wouldn't know how to use it. So, <laughs> I don't even have a big computer sitting on a desk anywhere. I have a Chromebook and a phone, and that's what I use to do everything. But anyways, I went to work Thursday morning. I got out of my car, my Yukon, and um, the only thing I remember is maybe I threw my phone in the top of my purse. And when I got out, I was messing around trying to get some more things out of my vehicle. And that phone fell, and it fell out of my purse. And it fell face first on the concrete where there's a lot of little pieces of little tiny rocks and stuff. So you can imagine where I'm going with this. When I, I hollered, I said, oh my goodness. And uh, I picked that thing up and turned it over. And it was cracked. That little rock hit that just right, that it punctured all the way through that. And not only that, it punctured right where my camera on that phone is. And it had, that phone, sorry about that. My clock's gonna talk to you. But it punctured right where my camera was. And it turned black automatically. Well, I panicked, y'all. I panicked and I didn't think I'd ever panic over a phone but you see it's what I do my videos on so I got to hold my daughter now let's back up just a little bit me and Danny never even had a cell phone my kids probably had one before we ever did so when we decided to do it years ago we got on my oldest daughter's plan with her because it was the cheapest way to do it, and the easiest. So anyways, I'm on her plan still, and uh, so I called her, and I told her what happened. I said, Brittany, you've got to help me. I said, I have to have this phone. I said, you know it's what I do. <laughs> I do all my videos on, and all my editing, and everything I've got is on that phone. And she said, Mom, and she got on her plan, and... Uh, she got to look and, and I said, now, I, you know, I've had this phone a while and I've been wanting to update it anyways. So just find me, look and get me, a, you know, find me a good phone. And I know that she knows enough about it, a lot more than I do, that she could fix this. So I'm still just massaging this cabbage and it's really getting, you can see how it's kind of limping up there a little bit. But anyways, she did and she, uh, she said, I found your phone. And she told me, you know, how much it's going to cost. And she um, turned my, my old phone in. I could turn it in and take some off of my new phone. And, you know, she was just going on and on. She figured all this out. 
I said, now, where can I, when can I get this phone? You know, I can't wait forever. She said, well, UPS is saying they can have it to us by tomorrow, which would have been Friday. It broke Thursday morning. I was so relieved. I said, okay, that's great. So she ordered me everything that I needed with this phone. And um, it did. The see, Friday night about 7 o'clock, my phone showed up, UPS. So... I went to her house with this new phone because I have no idea how to set a new phone up. I tell you, if it wasn't for, for my my kids, I don't. Me and Danny, I don't think we could do anything when it comes to our phone or computers and stuff. Now Danny's starting to figure the phones out pretty good, but anyways, once we finally figured out what my account password was because I hadn't used it, and I don't know when we had to change it. And once we done that, it was no time. She had my phone ready going. Everything had went from my old phone to my new phone in no time. And it was like such a relief because it was like, you know, the only way that I can, you know, have connection with my YouTube family is through this phone. <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh my goodness. But anyways, it got fixed. And... Um, I've got to learn to quit just, you know, throwing that phone in my purse and, and digging around and messing around trying to get things, you know, organized. I've got to be a little bit more delicate with this phone. And I used to be, but sometimes I just get busy. Okay, you see how I'm still misogynist and there's a lot of liquid starting to come out. Now... You can put something over this and weigh this down and just let it sit a while before you put it in whatever container that you're going to put it in. If you're going to put it in a pickle jar or some kind of big jug or a crock like I'm fixing to do. But I'm fixing to put mine in this crock here in just a little bit. I'm going to spread this out now that I've really massaged that salt into that cabbage. I'm going to weigh it down. I'm going to put a plate on top of this. And uh, you see how much this went down. I'm going to put a plate on top of this and uh, just let it sit a while and let a lot of that, uh, the liquids, kind of drain from that cabbage. And then we're going to put it here in my crock and we're going to start stamping it down. And if I don't have enough brine to cover it, We'll make a little brine to make sure that it's all covered and uh, ready to ferment and put up for about six weeks. Now I've had this cabbage sitting here I went and done a few other things. So it's probably been, not no hours, probably been about 30 minutes. Because I'm ready to get this done. And you see it, how it smashed down on that cabbage and it made a little bit of juice. But we're just getting started. So I'm gonna take this cabbage. And I made me some extra brine. I've got four cups of water in my little pitcher, and to each cup I've got a tablespoon of salt. So I've got four tablespoons of salt to four cups of water. There's a little stringy something there. So the little bit of juice that is in here, I'm going to go ahead and pour in my crock and I'm going to start I need to I don't know how much of this brine I'm going to need but I'm going to start real good I don't think I started after I put the salt in it and I'll stir it again before I use it So, now, we're going to start tamping this, 
getting all that good brine and juices up out of that cabbage. So I'm just going to start tamping my, my cabbage. And as I, I'm tamping it, it's going to start releasing a lot more liquid and it's going to make a brine. But it doing this, it doesn't always make enough brine to come up all the way over your cabbage. I like for it to be at least an inch over my cabbage. I've been tamping on this for about 10 minutes and I want to show you and I don't know if y'all can see it or not but I'm going to try. Um, if I push down on this you can see the brine where it's come up to. You can see it right there on top. But that's still not enough brine. So I'm going to take the brine that I've got mixed up which is four cups of water four tablespoons of salt and go ahead and cover that up that it covers everything up good that's probably about half an inch I'm going to go with just a little bit more and I'll tell you what I'll do as I harvest my cabbage I'll come in and I'll clean my cabbage good. Do the same thing with it. Put the salt on it. Massage it. Get it to the stage that it has to be. And then put it in here with the rest of this. And it'll get built up as time goes on. Now yes, the bottom will be fermented faster than the, as you go fill it up. But the thing of it is, that fermentation that's down on the bottom is going to help ferment the rest of this that you've been adding to it. And it's going to make this that you added to it ferment that much faster. So, let me get I took some outer cabbage leaves and I'm going to place them on top. And I like to cover it up all the way around, all the way around the sides, good, and I'll even put a little extra, and I have these weights, and I don't think this come with my crock, I had to order these separate, and that weight is going to hold the leaves down and all that cabbage underneath that brine. Now about once a week I'll come through because I'll just put this back here on my counter. I'll come through and I'll look at it if there's any kind of foam or a little bit of mold or anything that I, I see I'll skim it out. Um, look at the leaves make sure there's nothing going on with my kraut and just go on from there. And I will leave this kraut in here, even after add more to it, anywhere from six to eight weeks. Um, by the time cooler weather gets here, I should have kraut. So, like I said, as I keep harvesting my cabbage, what I want to make kraut out of, and what I don't make coleslaw or something else out of it, I'll just keep adding it to this. And it will eventually, all of it will ferment and do really well. So it's about that easy. You don't have to have a crock to do this. You can do this like I do most of the time in just a gallon jar with a good lid on it. Um, I've got some little glass weights that fit right down into my jars really good. You can get them on Amazon to weigh uh, your fermentation down. So there we go. It's ready to put the lid on and start fermenting. 
about that easy. In about four to six weeks, I'll have me some good old sauerkraut. I'll put it in a jar and put it in the refrigerator and we'll eat on it. It's just so good and so good for you.